All right, let's do this. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So as you can see by the title of this video today, we are doing K-pop concert tips. And yes, I've already done a video on this, I believe last year, but this video is gonna be pertaining more to tips for the day of the concert. And if anybody knows how stressful the day of a concert can be, it is this girl, especially when I've driven and flown on the day of a concert, which is insane. But that's what this video today is going to be about. A lot of people have been asking me about more tips and tricks and things like that. Um, in my last video, I talked more about like ticketing and how to get tickets and things like that. And this video today is gonna be more of so like how to manage your day, the day of a concert, if that makes sense, or like a festival or like KCON and things like that. Uh, because I've been to Coachella to see Blackpink and I've also been to KCON and I've gone to a few other concerts as well. So I feel like I have a good general understanding of like what to do for like different events Especially now the 80s and La Seraphim are going to Coachella and KCON I feel like it's getting bigger and bigger each year So I feel like more people are going and then plus concerts in general I just feel like concerts are getting bigger and bigger and bigger every single time that I go to them um, So yeah, but I did write about a few key points. I wanted to talk about on my little iPad so I have my thoughts written down kind of in a way, but we're gonna go through them together. So let's start. So the first thing I wanna talk about is getting to the concert, whether you're driving, you're flying, or all of the above, you know? So personally for me, because if you know me or know anything about me or have seen some of my videos um, of my concert vlogs, either I fly the day of the concert or I drive the day of the concert or I'll get there the day before just depending on what type of ticket that I have. But if anybody knows what it's like to get there the day of the concert, it's me. So obviously you need to figure out how you're getting there, right? You're either driving, you're flying and things like that. And usually by that time you already know where you're staying and everything like that. But if you're driving the day of the concert, so what I like to do is even though check-in for hotels is normally like what, 4 p.m. it seems like for most places, I'll leave super duper early in the morning. So, so because I live far away from the big cities in Texas that usually hold concerts, so like Houston and Dallas. I know San Antonio's been starting to get more concerts, but it's normally Houston and Dallas. So if it's in Houston, I'll drive. If it's in Dallas, I'll fly. Um, but what I like to do is if I drive, I like to drive super duper early in the morning. I know I might sound crazy because like I said before, Getting to hotels, they don't let you check in early, which actually goes into one of my other points that if you're driving up super duper early, it doesn't hurt to give the hotel a call and ask them if they have early check-in or if there's any rooms available that you can check in to the hotel early for. I do that all the time. Like I'll call or I'll have one of my friends that I'm driving with call. And like sometimes we're, we're lucky where um, they'll be like, oh yeah, we have a room available. Like if you get here, like we can check you in right away. And I'm like, perfect, because you know what? Then I can take a nap before the concert if I can and do my makeup not in a rush. But yeah, I tend to leave like around maybe 6 a.m. or I just leave with plenty of time because you never know what's gonna happen. Like I'll leave early, so just in case, like if I wanna go out to eat or if I wanna sightsee or if I wanna do something before the concert, I have enough time to. And if I fly the day of the concert, I try to get the earliest flight out there because let's say there's like delays or anything like that, I have other flights to fall back on, if that makes sense. So like, let's say my flight's at 6 a.m. and I'll get to Dallas at 9 a.m. Let's say um, my connecting flight gets delayed or my connecting flight is um, not there or something's happening with my connecting flight, right? I can basically be like, oh, well, there's other flights that are after that one that'll take me to Dallas and I'll still get there on time. So that's like the mentality I like to do. I like to do that on returning flights also. Like I will not get the last, last one. I'll get like the second to last or the third to last. So I have something to fall back on. And like I said before, it never hurts just to give the hotel a call and ask if like, hey, do you have any available rooms? And if they say yes, perfect. And if they don't, it's completely okay. You just check in at four. Um, but whenever you're able to check in early, I like to do that to take a nap. Like usually I'll get to the city, I'll eat something or I'll get gas, whatever I need to do. And then if I'm checked in early, I'll go to the hotel and I will take a big nap if I'm able to. If I have GA or like VIP tickets that I'm not allowed to take a nap, then unfortunately I just get ready and then I go. 
but let's say that like I have a seated ticket like for twice for example um, we were able to check into our hotel a little bit early so I was able to take a nap and then get ready and then go to the concert which was very very nice but yeah so just make sure you have a backup plan to your backup plan especially when it comes to flights because flights are very unpredictable I am the queen of going to concerts like flying to concerts and the weather is terrible like it might not be raining really bad where I live but like in a big city it might be raining and I'm just like oh so just plan like have a backup plan plan ahead okay so next um, when you get there you kind of want to scope the area so I know me personally I like to scope the area like where the venue is not only because sometimes you're doing early merch which I'll talk about in a second but I like to know what the parking situation is or if I bought parking um, when I bought the tickets, I like to see where the parking lot is. How am I gonna get there? How am I gonna get in and just see like around the area and just scope it out basically I like to know where I'm going and how it looks like so I'm not confused or lost when it's the time of the concert Especially like if you have VIP tickets like you want to know the area where you're lining up how it's gonna be where the entrances are and all that stuff so that's usually what I do after I get to the city like if my hotel's not ready yet then I will go to the stadium or to the arena and check it out and be like okay this is where I'm gonna be this is where everything is these are the restaurants around me this, these are the parking garages and then kind of go from there and then merch which kind of ties into this because you can buy merchandise during and before the concert and even after the concert but I know some groups have been doing early merch so if you want to do early merch, you do have to pay attention to the times a little bit. Um, so you just, they'll tweet about it usually, and then you just make plans to go. And you can also use that as an excuse to scope out the area too. Like, always good to have a buddy system also. Like, don't go alone. If you can go with somebody, I would definitely go with somebody else because if I didn't have, like, my friends with me sometimes, I feel like I would have gotten lost, you know? Like, and that's, and that's scary when you get lost, you know? And I know some groups are now doing early merch the day before and the day of. Um, and I know some people that get there a day before, um, they'll go and get merch the day before. So you can get merch whenever. You can get merch before the concert, like at, at an earlier time, during the concert, and after the concert. I know after the concert you might be a little bit rushed, but never hurts to like go like after the concert like people are like in line anyways to get merch but if you do want like the fresh the the big chunk of the stuff I would probably go before a concert if you can because I know sometimes some groups they sell out of merch like super duper quick like so it just really depends every group is different but you can get it before the concert during the concert or after the concert uh, which leads me to my next point though, which is money. So when it comes to money going to concerts the day of, like yes, you can have like your card and stuff like that or your phone with Apple Pay or like whatever you have, Samsung Pay, but it never hurts to carry a little bit of cash with you because you never know when you're gonna need it. Because sometimes at these like stadiums or at these arenas, sometimes the little machines will break and they're like, we're only taking cash. And you're kind of just like, oh, what the heck? Like, nobody uses cash anymore. But it's always good to have cash because you never know when you're going to need it. So whenever I go on trips like this, I always carry at least, at least a few bills in my, my wallet. Not a crazy amount, but enough to where if, like, I needed to pay something, I had enough money for it. You know, whether it's going to be for parking, for merch, for food, for, like, tipping, you know, things like that. Just have enough in your wallet that if something were to happen you could fall back on that money and I feel like that's a very good thing to have because you never know never know when you're gonna need cash so now let's talk about lining up for concerts so obviously there's two types of lineups there's gonna be like if there's GA VIP or there's gonna be you're gonna line up just to get into the venue because you know you have a seat so I've done both so let's talk about the more crazy one first, which is gonna be if you have like GA floor, VIP floor, or anything that just regards a pit, that there's no seats and you're gonna be standing the entire time. So, honestly, not gonna lie, it can be a toss up at any given moment. And I'm saying this because 
if you want to be barricade for a concert i kind of talk about it in my last video but i'm gonna like re-emphasize it here it's really gonna depend on what type of situation the venue has because i'm pretty sure you've all seen it like on twitter or like on tiktok and things like that some people like to camp out and there's nothing wrong with camping out like don't get me wrong like if you want to be in the front by all means, I will support you if you want to camp out. And then there's some people that don't camp out and there's nothing wrong with that either. I've been on both ends of the spectrum, I guess you could say. So an experience that I've had with GA Floor has been for ATs, I believe, and a few other concerts and KCON and Coachella. But I feel like Coachella is like such a big festival that's a little bit different. But for KCON and ATs, I was GA Floor. So I'm gonna base off my experiences off of those. So for ATs, for example, they had seven Sector VIP and ATN VIP and I know people had camped out but I didn't know what type of VIP that they had and unfortunately at that time it was very very cold at night in Dallas so I was like I am like the wimpiest person when it comes to being outside so I had decided that I was okay with wherever I was um, in the venue like concert wise um, but I did have ATN VIP so with ATN VIP you were the first people to get into the venue and the first people to go into the stage as well. So my experience with that one is a little bit different because if you were ATN VIP, more than likely you were going to get barricade. And if you were in sector VIP, if you were like within the first, I would say like 100 or so, 150, 200 of them, you were like in the row right behind us. So I would say barricade wise, like if you want to be touching that metal, touching that that um barricade i would say you would have to be within the first 200 people ish um because obviously those stages are huge like i know at's stage was really really big so like if you were in the first 200 people you were barricade more or less because so the takeaway from it is if you are vip and you want to get barricade i would definitely definitely if you don't want to camp out you know i would definitely try to get there as early as possible but the thing is if you get there as early as possible you are gonna already have to be ready you're already gonna have to have your outfit your makeup your hair like everything done and you're gonna be waiting in a line for quite a while so that's why i'm always saying like take a buddy with you like don't go on your own because then like, you can alternate so like it's like you can go to the restroom while your friend holds your spot they can go to the restroom while you hold your guys a spot or you guys can order food together or one person can go get the food while the other person stays in line or one person can go get merch while the other one stays in line like you know like a buddy system like a tag team system um, and if you do decide to camp out just make sure you are safe like i think that's like the biggest thing is like i understand like people are not big fans of campers and like things like that but i mean to each their own like, but if you do decide to camp out i feel like the biggest thing is going to be safety like be careful know the area know what happens around you because if you're going to be out there for more than 24 hours like you never know what's going to happen so please like all i can say is like just be safe be aware of your surroundings and like don't be by yourself like but yeah so if you're going to line up super duper early because you have vip ga or just ga in general please be careful please be careful that's basically like the big takeaway i want to say is like just be careful but if you want to if you don't want to camp out i would say try to get there as early as possible and if you can gauge i would say maybe the first 200 people i would definitely say you are more than likely going to be barricade or the row right behind the people that are barricade and honestly that's still a good spot too because you're literally right there like you can see it you are there and we're talking more about festivals or like KCON and things like that. KCON runs a little bit differently where they'll give you wristbands and they'll have a number on the wristband and then you just come back at a certain time and they line you up by that number. With KCON it's a little bit different because they do give you wristbands and you are numbered and you do line up by that number at a certain time. Um, but if we're talking about concerts, usually they don't do that. I know some concerts do. I've heard of a few groups that do that. But to the concerts that I've been to, Unfortunately, they don't do that, which kind of stinks, boo, but whatever, it is what it is. So yeah. So next we're gonna talk about lining up if you don't have GA or any VIP um, GA tickets or pit tickets, so to speak. So whenever I have a ticket that is numbered, like I know where I'm sitting, I know what section I'm in and things like that. I usually don't get to the venue until maybe an hour, an hour and a half before. It just really, really depends because when it comes to GA, like, you know, you're trying to get a good spot, right? But when it comes to having the seat, 
I know I'm gonna have a seat and I don't have to worry about anything, right? So what I like to do if I have a seat and when I get to the venue, I usually take a lap around the venue. Like I know sometimes these venues are huge, like I get it. So maybe I'll do like a half circle or like a half, a half walk and I try to see which line is the shortest to get in because there's always that one area like the main entrance where there's like a bunch of people and the line is going so slow so I like to take a little walk and see what entrance has the shortest line and then I will just like go in that line call my friends if they're like waiting somewhere else being like hey like if you just walk a few more whatever feet down then there's this entrance and you can like get in and that's what I like to do. I like to look for the shortest line so I can get in quicker, so I can find my seat quicker, you know, grab a little snack inside if I'm hungry or if they didn't have early merch, go and shop for merch and things like that. And then sometimes people are giving out freebies. So if you get there a little bit early too, like an hour, more than an hour ahead, like maybe like two-ish, three-ish hours before, if you just want to soak up in like the funness, I would definitely go a little bit earlier because people are handing out freebies or they're having like random dance plays and like things like that. And I think it's so fun and so cute when people do that. Like I love watching it from afar. Would I ever join a random dance play? No, I feel like I'm too shy for that. But people are just like having fun. It's so cute. Like the atmosphere at concerts are so fun like I love it but yeah if I have a seat number I typically don't get there maybe until like an hour an hour and a half before um and things like that because also I like to take naps so if I can take a nap your girl taking a nap but yeah so that's the difference in between GA and not GA GA yeah and I kind of have to get there early not GA you can get there at whatever time you want because you have a seat and you get to sit down and be comfy. I feel like that's the only downside sometimes to like GA, like pit, like you know, where it's like you don't get to sit down. I love me a seat, like I love sitting down and like, I know like usually like during concert we're standing anyways, but I like knowing that I have a seat that I can put my stuff on, like that's always fun. And when I don't have one, it stinks but yeah so that's the difference in between ga and not ga but something i did forget to mention in the vip part a little bit i guess is a lot of groups now are having sound check so with sound check is usually a, a while before the concert starts so if you do have sound check they are very strict on if you're not here by a certain time like we are not letting you in for sound check and you will not be able to get in until like they let the doors open to the general public. So just be careful, know what time your sound check is and just be ready for it. And that also brings into consideration the time you wanna get there. Like if you're driving the day of or if you're flying the day of, if you have sound check, please be careful. I have also done where I fly in the day of that I have sound check, which is crazy. I know, I know. But if you do have sound check, I think the better thing is to probably get there the day before so you can rest, settle in, and things like that. But if you can't do that, just manage your time wisely, okay? Manage your time wisely. So now we're gonna talk about the concert, like the concert as a whole and things like that. So a big thing that people have asked me about is like bags. Bags for the concert and what I take and what usually do I bring inside with me? What do I leave at the hotel or like, what do I leave in my car and things like that. And let me show you, I have two bags that I usually take. So let me go get them and let me show them to you. So these are the two bags that I use. So I have this Adidas fanny pack and then I also have this coach little bag. So as you can see, they're relatively the same size. So whenever I go to concerts, I like to check the bag policy before I get there because Every venue is going to be different. Some venues let you bring in really, really big bags if they're clear and other um, places don't let you bring in big bags. It just really depends. Couldn't tell you really, but the bags that I usually take are going to be these. Like they're pretty relatively small and that's about it. So what I like to take the day of the concert. So a few things that I have in here that I always take are definitely my wallet for sure, for sure. And then I also carry all my lip products and I do have all my lip products in here right now. So you see my lip, my lippies. Um, a few other things that I like to take are batteries for my light stick just in case the ones I have inside die. And I also like to take like little wipies sometimes because you never know. Wipies and hand sanitizer have been my best friends. Like I like taking wipies and hand sanitizer with me everywhere. So usually like hand sanitizer, it would be a clip on 
will have wipes put them in here and things like that um i also like to take maybe gum because sometimes like you need a little thing a little snack because you can't take in like big food obviously like you can buy food in there but if you just need like a little bit of something like gum i'll take gum and then obviously i take my photo card so right now i have this photo card um holder on my purse it is che one from la seraphim right here um, I usually take one here and I'll also have one in the back of my phone So right now it's Sung Hwam on the back of my phone And then I'll also take maybe another photo card holder and I'll like put it somewhere on my outfit Or I'll put it on my bag and I'll have two So it just really depends But don't forget your photo cards Photo cards are the most important thing I know I'm an overpacker guys I overpack all the time because I'm like I never know when I'm gonna need something But because I have these such small bags I gotta limit what I take inside and hope for the best. Like these, they don't have that much room. Like as you can see, I have lotion in this one. And then I have contacts and lip products in this one also. So you really have to like gauge it. Like when I went to Coachella, um, I did take a backpack with me, but on my last day, I only survived off of this bad boy right here. Yep. And then for ATs and for, I believe, NCT 127, I took this one. And I survived so just be cautious of the bags like and what you need to take because some arenas are very very strict and some arenas are not strict but if they are on the stricter side they will tell you that you cannot bring that bag in and you are gonna have to go back to your car and put it back and nobody wants to do that just it just puts a Debbie downer because I'm like just put just let me in like let me in they don't want us to have fun you know whatever but yeah usually my bags or these bags are a three by five three by six i think they're not that big like literally it's like the size of my hand essentially so just be aware be careful and if you want something more secure i would definitely go with like a crossbody or like a fanny pack like this fanny pack i always wear it like this where i wrap it around here and i have it here so at least i can hold on to it like this um, or I'll have my bag since it's that small I can just hook it on this way and bring it forward and hold on to it And then also you can bring your pickets also into the venue I know some venues have been really weird where they're not letting you take your pickets in but I mean for 17 People had their pickets, so everything was fine. For 80s, pretty sure they had their pickets and everything was fine. But I feel like I've heard of other venues, like in different parts of the Americas, where they're just like, oh, you can't bring that in, which is crazy. But it is what it is. So just be careful. Just be careful when you bring oversized things because they might tell you to go put it back in your car. And again, it's like, just let me in. But I don't know. The workers are doing their job. So unfortunately, I can't get mad at them. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about is upgrading your tickets. So I've done this a few times actually where I've upgraded my tickets um, the day of the concert. So if you want to be on the safe side, I would definitely just upgrade them at the venue. Like you go to the box office and you tell them like, oh, I want to upgrade my tickets. And usually they'll have a map or they'll let you know what tickets are available. Or if you go on Ticketmaster or wherever you bought the tickets and you see that there are seats that are open still, you can literally tell them, I want the tickets in this section and this row. And then you just give them the email that you bought your tickets on and then they'll do their little thing with Jigger that they like to do. And then you get to upgrade your seats sometimes you can upgrade your seats for very very cheap sometimes you do have to pay a little bit more like they probably won't be as much as they normally are like let's say like you paid a hundred dollars for your tickets and the new tickets that you're that you want are 200 you basically just pay the difference plus tax so that's like a hundred dollars you know so if you want to upgrade your seats upgrade your seats if you can if you can't and you're chilling with your seats eh, don't even worry about it but i have upgraded my seats a few times and let me tell you it's always a fun time when you upgrade them but also i know sometimes if you're lucky if you're like up in the nosebleeds sometimes some of the workers will be like how would you like to go sit down in the lower bowl and you're just like oh i love it and then sometimes they'll like cut up the tickets and like give them to you and you get to go sit down so you never know you might be lucky but if you want to upgrade your seats i would definitely do it at the box office i know sometimes they don't do it until doors open so if you want to do that i would definitely get there to the venue early also so that's like another thing if you want to upgrade your tickets i would definitely get to the venue early as well um because once you upgrade them you get to go inside and that's fun 
And then during the concert, well, just have fun. Have the time of your life, scream your little head off, do whatever you want to do. It will be you do you. If you want to record the whole concert, record the whole concert. If you want to live in the moment, you live in the moment, you have fun. If you want to do half and half like me, do half and half. It's completely up to you. Just be mindful of people around you and just like be courteous and be nice and things like that. Like I know sometimes people at concerts are a little bit weird. Like they don't let you have fun, which is insane. Like why would you not have fun at a concert? But whatever but you know what we just got to be courteous of other people be self-aware be self-conscious and like you know as long as they're not being a debbie downer and you're not being a debbie downer we can have fun and everything will be okay next is a point that i think is very 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 importante because i like to go out to eat after concerts <laughs> So after concerts, I usually like to go out to eat depending on like what city I'm in. If I'm in like Houston or if I'm in Dallas and depending on the friends that I'm with or I'm hanging out with, I like to go out to eat afterwards because I'm hungry. Like I just screamed my lungs out for two hours. I'm going to be thirsty first of all and I'm going to be very, very hungry. Like that first sip of water that you take after you've been screaming at a concert for two hours is crazy. So... What I like to do um, early on the day is I like to scope, when I scope out the area, I like to see what restaurants or what fast food restaurants are around the area and then that'll determine what I get afterwards. So if there's a McDonald's, more than likely I'm going to McDonald's, getting them a chicken, getting a big water and probably a milkshake. If there's like a pizza, usually we get a pizza for the whole group, get waters, things like that. Or if it's like a restaurant's like open late, like Korean barbecue go to Korean barbecue have fun talk about the concert like like you know like you just want to live in the moment bask in the moment and just like have fun me personally I do like to go out to eat with my friends but if I can get a McChicken and a milkshake and a water best believe I'm going to that McDonald's and then going straight back to the hotel to eat it and knock out well first I'm gonna watch my concert videos and then I'm gonna knock out like sleep I'm gonna be knocked out but yeah, I would definitely, when you're scoping out the area, know what restaurants you're, you're around. So if you want to go out to eat afterwards, like you can stop and you know where it is and you don't have to take time looking for it. Because getting out of those concerts is crazy. Like the traffic is insane and things like that. I usually wait until traffic dies down to like leave and then I'll look for food. So that's like another tip that I can give you is like when you are at the parking lot or wherever you're parked, I would wait a little bit for traffic to die down and then I would leave because I hate being in traffic it makes me sick so I usually wait a little bit and then I will drive out and then I'll go find food and then I will go back to the hotel eat it and then go to bed shower all that fun stuff but this also brings me to my last point so I know a lot of the time a lot of people when they're going to concerts they're only there for the day of the concert and they check out like the day after so they, it's like, what, two days in the night, as hotel people like to call it, or whatever. And so a big thing that helps me a lot is when I wake up in the morning, I'm tired. So what I like to do is I like to pack the night before. Obviously, I can't pack the clothes that I'm wearing or um, pack, like, my makeup if I'm doing my makeup or my toothbrushes and things like that. But, like, all of the bigger things that can be put away, like, dirty clothes or, like, uh, merch that I bought and, like, things like that. Like, if I can put it away already, I will put it away in my suitcase. And then in the morning, all I have to do is, like, my smaller stuff, like, my toiletries, my makeup and things like that. Once that's put away and I'm good to go put away my PJs that I was wearing, like, it makes the cleanup and everything so much faster um and it saves me time and also i get to sleep in a little bit later because what checkout is like what at 11 you can always call and ask for a late checkout no shame in that but sometimes they're like no and you're like boo but you know you can always ask no harm in asking the worst they can do is tell you no um but packing at night definitely helps me a lot i packed at night before i left for kcon 2 because my flight was at 5 a.m so me packing like right when i got back and then showering and everything like that really saved me a lot of time especially when i slept for like two hours before i needed to leave to the airport which is in same and then if you flew but you didn't drive i would definitely order your uber ahead of time like have it scheduled to come pick you up like it's so much better 
to have it scheduled to pick you up than to actually have to wait for an Uber, especially if you're going back to the airport. Sometimes that can be a little bit stressful if nobody's like picking up your ride, but if you have it scheduled, more than likely someone is going to pick it up and you're gonna be ready to go. But if you're driving, you know, if you need to, you need to, like especially in Texas, there's Bucky's everywhere. If you need to go to a Bucky's and take a nap, go to Bucky's and take a nap. No shame in that because I've done that as well. Um, because you need to be well rested before you drive anywhere. Always be well rested before you drive. Never drive sleepy. And that's like the number one advice that I could give you if you're driving, do not drive sleepy. I would rather you take a nap in a parking lot somewhere than drive sleepy. Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about KCON and Coachella, only because, like I said at the beginning, now K-pop groups are going to Coachella, and KCON is getting bigger and bigger every year. So I wanna talk about a little bit about that, like ticketing and things like that, just like quick little tips and things, because I know tickets for Coachella are already sold out, and I know a lot of people are going for like the first time also, because ATs and La Seraphim are going. So last Coachella, I went last year when, or I went the year that Blackpink was headed lining and then Jackson Wang was also there and DPREN and Live were also there so I got to see those three amazing um, artists at Coachella um, that year and let me tell you obviously Coachella is a three-day weekend festival and it's so fun like don't get me wrong I had so much fun going there but now that a lot of k-pop groups are going a lot of people might only want to go to like one day um, but unfortunately I've never seen one day tickets unless somebody's selling them off to the side or maybe i just didn't look hard enough and coachella like has one day tickets i know Lollapalooza does that a lot where they'll only have tickets for one day but coachella let me tell you it is a little bit crazy in the sense there's a lot of people like when i was there for blackpink like i did indeed stay around the main stage area all day so i could get the area that i wanted from them um, but all they can say with like Coachella and things like that is to be careful. This is not a concert. It is a concert, but it's like a totally completely different vibe compared to a concert. Like it's a festival. So you're outside, there's weather, it's going to be hot, it's going to be cold, it's going to be a lot of people pushing and shoving and things like that. So when it comes to these things like that, because I know ATs and La Seraphim are really relatively big groups. And I know a lot of their fans are going to want to go. So all I can say is like, just be careful like make sure you're well hydrated make sure like you're drinking enough water you eating enough food they do have a lot of food and yes it is expensive but i would rather pay for something expensive to eat than faint in the heat um it's not that hot but it does get a little bit hot during the day it just really depends and then sometimes at night it does get really cold so you do need to be careful when it comes to like what you're wearing because you can have an outfit that's super duper cute and you're fine during the day but then at night it's like 50 degrees and you're freezing because that happened to me and i was like oh my gosh like i'm cold but with coachella just be careful yes tickets are expensive i do understand that but it's a festival you know but yeah when it comes to getting tickets for coachella i got tickets in the pre-sale when i didn't even know the headliners so if you're buying tickets after the headliners are announced they are a little bit more expensive than when the pre-sale in june happens but i mean they're all around the same price so usually that's when you get tickets you buy it you go onto the coachella website they'll send the tickets to you i think a month month or three weeks in advance you'll get a wristband i have my wristband actually somewhere here i wish i could find it and it's like Lollapalooza. once you put on that wristband you can't take it off so do not wear it early because you cannot take it off and it's crazy and if you are buying resale wristbands for coachella also just be careful a lot of people like to scam because you do have to like put your wristband on like a little thing and then it has to light up green in order for you to go through so just be careful okay um but if you're going to coachella this year to see la seraphim and ats i hope you have an amazing time send me videos please i need to see what ats and la seraphim do at this coachella please 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 um, and then KCON. So KCON is getting bigger every year. I went in 2023, so the year that Wavy was there, um, I, Shonu and Hyungwon, Taeyong, Taemin, um, Kravity, and all the other amazing artists. Those are the people that I saw. And Mix. Um, so KCON is getting bigger and bigger every year. I know this year it's going to be in July, which is crazy because usually in August, 
and I really wanted to go this year but unfortunately I will not be here when KCON is here. I but when it comes to KCON, I don't know what they did last year. I know like the whole ticketing situation was a little bit different from years prior but if you ever need help when it comes to KCON ticketing or just things in general, feel free to shoot me a DM or comment down below. I'll try my best to answer you. Um, I feel like there's so much info like I want to give that I don't have enough time to give it. Because if not, this video would definitely be like two, three hours long, you know. Um, but when it comes to ticketing for KCON, um, you have to buy your tickets for every day separate. Which is kind of crazy if you ask me. Like, why can't I just buy them all at the same time? But you do have to buy your day separately and you do also have to buy your convention separately. Crazy. But I know some tickets do come with a convention already, so it just really depends. But with my experience with KCON, I had a really, really fun time. I know a lot of people didn't like that it was disorganized. And let me tell like, don't, don't get me wrong. Some parts were very disorganized and all these things, but also I feel like where they're holding KCON the venue is very very small like compared to the popularity that it's getting every year like i feel like more people are coming every single year and because of that like the venue is just getting too small other than that i had a very very fun time there i got to see all my friends all my mutuals from like tiktok twitter instagram youtube like it was so fun but if you ever need ticketing advice or ticketing help feel free to shoot me a dm I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you and just personally from my experience when it comes to things like coachella and like kcon you really have to plan ahead like i know sometimes people don't plan ahead and they just wing it but i'm not the type of person to do that like i need to plan ahead and know what i'm doing know where i'm going how am i going to get there when i'm going to get there and things like that but again for kcon just be safe know your surroundings, make sure you're eating, make sure, make sure you're having fun too, but just be careful. If you want me to make a video completely about KCON, let me know. Or if you want me to make a video completely about Coachella, let me know. I only been to Coachella and KCON once, but I feel like from the one time that I've went, I feel like I could plan a whole nother trip and like give people advice on it. But those are just like my two cents when it comes to KCON and Coachella. But other than that, those are all the tips that I have for you guys. But if you have any more questions, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or you can put them down in the comments below and I would be more than happy to answer those questions for you. I know this is a lot of information going at one time, but if I was going to a concert or to a festival for the very first time, I feel like these type of videos, even if there's a lot of information, I would be very, very grateful for because if like i didn't know what was happening like i want a little bit of insight and i really hope that i could give a little bit of insight to people for it but yeah if you guys have any more questions again feel free to send them to me or comment them down below and i will gladly answer them but that is the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed um but please stay safe out there and i will see you in my next video bye